Okay, welcome Mohammad Al Khadra. It's such a great pleasure to have you. I wanted to speak to you first about something you said at a recent conference. You said they're killing us and all you talk about is Islamophobia. Can you explain what you meant by that? Yeah. The main concern as is, as I've seen like I I I thought that uh, us being targeted to be killed is the most uh, thing that the people who are secular and people who are humanists are uh, and either left or right uh, that they are concerned about but then when i came there everybody was talking about the islamophobia and how can we judge islam and how what's allowed to be said and what's not allowed to be said and they give it so much of their time and so much of their energy that i just wish like why isn't this energy focused on saving lives rather than buying into this propaganda being sold to people just to silence them and I, and, I, and then i found out that there are like two sorts of people there are ones who are simply afraid of the reaction that will come to them when they criticize islam and there are other people who are just uh, have fell into the self guilt and self shaming of the west that they think that if only we can be nice to everybody else this will save us all and solve all, all of our problems well one of the problems is that people are getting put to death for this and being nice doesn't solve it out because uh, and i don't mean being intolerant to individuals but being intolerant to an intolerant in the ideology is the most approach that i see probable in this i mean it's interesting because the point you're making the fact that it seems that criticism of islam is worse than killing people in a way you know and that's exactly what you uh, put your finger on yeah because uh, it's just like nobody would give you a medal for for something you shouldn't be like we are we all shouldn't be racist we all shouldn't be bigots so we don't have to just buy into whatever individual asks for us just for the sake of looking this way uh, standing up for people who are being imprisoned and butchered with machetes is, is something much more noble to do and i don't see that in here I've seen it with some organizations, some movements, but most of, uh, of the left or the uh, they, they just believe that we, if we can only just uh, tolerate this, it's gonna go, all go away. Well, even if it goes away here in, in the West, it, it won't go away in the Middle East. We don't hear Islamophobia in the Middle East. Like if I say that I'm, I'm an atheist and I criticize Islam in Jordan, nobody will accuse me of being an Islamophobe. They will just lock me up or do something to me. And that's uh, the point, isn't it, that the situation is really bad for atheists and apostates and blasphemers in Jordan, the Middle East, North Africa. Tell us a bit about the situation for those who are considered apostates and blasphemers. Well, it's, it's mostly dangerous for women, but it's for both genders as well. And the, uh, what I say is for, like for women, for example, it's like a, a strike to the honor of the family just to leave Islam. So it's something much more dangerous for a woman because you can be easily killed for that just for the honor add to that of uh, being an opposite it doubles the dangers and i've seen cases where i like kidnapped a, a girl to get her into family protection and she had uh, glass all over her face like glass cuts and a bruise here and when we got to the family protection the, the policeman said well this girl has a hijab on her id card can you please get a hijab for this girl this was the first answer they weren't like concerned about this because who is she like, like why did she leave her family so uh, for for either genders it's a lot more difficult as well based on the society not just the government because it takes just one madman with a with the, this ideology to believe that he can go to heaven for killing you and people used to joke with me at work like we can go and drink and do whatever but at least we have muhammad in the store we can come and kill him and go to heaven 
so uh, th they don't see that as something that could hurt you emotionally and once you get over the threats and everything you begin to be used to that but uh, then there are people who are actually being killed like like not hot or dead and uh, just uh, and with the government you can lose your civil rights there, uh, there was a convert, I think, in 2005 or six. Uh, he converted to Christianity. To, he wasn't even an atheist, and they did that lawsuit against him. And he was, uh, they broke his marriage, and he can't inherit. He can't do any civil papers in the country. And uh, it's not that bad as Saudi Arabia or Iran, for example. But uh, still, where, where, wherever this ideology is spreading and it has power to dictate in politics. You give it a hand to do this to people in anywhere in any place. Once it's considered acceptable to to judge or imprison or prosecute apostates, uh, it's fairly reasonable within the community to just have one guy being killed for being so. Yeah, it's interesting because you know a lot of people have this impression that everything's fine in Jordan, and Jordan's different from Saudi Arabia. But even there, there's great risks involved, and I guess. Uh, there's risks anywhere, as you say, that this movement I exists. So, why did you feel then, given that it's quite risky to start, J uh, you know, a Jordanian atheist group, and um, what made you want to do that? Well, uh, one of the reasons was I, I didn't get the idea about atheism or something if, like, someone like uh, Richard Dawkins wasn't public about his atheism. So, if if we are all public about it and out of the closet and just speaking out against it, we give people uh, just the idea of doubt and just the idea to think. And we give others who are in the closet and can't speak out, just give them a, a voice like you can speak for them. So once you defend them, especially here in the West when you have free speech, once you defend them and do that, you, you have the, the ability to speak for us who can't speak. Uh, so the, the, the need to have this community in Jordan came to give these people a sort of family because once you leave Islam, you just, you're detached from, from whatever emotions you have for your family because a large part of your life is considered about, uh, concern, uh, revolves around Islam. So once you lose that, you don't have anybody you can talk to and be like you. So uh, after a year of work, we, we got to the to finally establish a community for them. And now, when I wanted to do a council for ex-Muslims in Jordan, uh, I was uh, fairly sure that the government won't allow such a thing. And even the guys at the community were like, no, please don't uh, don't involve us in something like this that is so public because we can be prosecuted. Actually, when I finished my speech and I went back to Jordan, atheists actually messaged me and told me like we, uh, we're removing you from Facebook please delete our messages we can't be stay friends with you we love you and you have spoken for us but we can't have uh, being connected to you because if they get you they get all of us so uh, you, you can even lose your atheist friends for fear of prosecution uh, this is just in Jordan so you, you can multiply that a lot to, to get the image of Saudi Arabia or Iran as well and and I guess that's one of the things that there's a lot more people than we know about because of exactly what you talk about there is like I've had meetings where there are 30 40 100 like in the, in the group I used to have above 100 like 100 to 10 um, uh, there are people who like I was so picky with the group there are a lot of other individuals I didn't get them in and there are old people there there's a popular singer who I can't say his name he's an atheist there's a, we have people in the parliament who are atheists and can't speak out and one of them approached me and was just like I'm just like you but I can't say this and so so you have people in power that they're afraid like uh, these people in, especially in a in a not so democratic country these people should have the power to say whatever they wish nobody will get to them but they're so afraid of the reaction of the society that even a parliament member can say that what his religious views and, and can't criticize Islam. What, what do you what do you hope will happen I mean um, 
what sort of support do you think people should be giving? What changes do you wish, you know, for and are you fighting for, basically? Well, one of the changes that I hope with is, especially in Bangladesh and Pakistan, Iran and Saudi Arabia, these are the most dangerous countries, is that people who are trying to get away, that they can get the help uh, and the support they can. And I know that there are so many organizations that, that do this help, but there's so many of them, and there's the problem is, is increasing, it's not decreasing. Uh, especially with the numbers rising and there's also the pressure on these governments to change their laws and to stop this uh, persecution but still you need to have a, some kind of reform into education where the society changes his mind and allows secularism and allows people to think the way they what they wish so we need to start by uh, the voice here and the speech here to speak about this issue and raise awareness about it and for people in the Middle East to have a little bit of courage to show their faces, to speak out uh, so that people in the West actually know that there is a problem. Yeah. And so there's this Atheist Coming Out Day, isn't there, um, that's being organized. Um, any news on that? Well, uh, the plan was, uh, because when I finished my speech, uh, there was a Christian girl, she, she broke down because of the prosecution she had in the U.S. for being an atheist from her family. So uh, I thought about having a day where we can protest all kinds of prosecution we have and all kinds of bigotry and all kinds of, of like, we... we uh, to normalize the world, to normalize ourselves, to be considered as human as people of faith are. For that, I, I said, like, maybe we can put a day, like, two years from now or one year from now, where everybody can celebrate being an atheist, celebrate being an ex-Muslim uh, in their certain city. And, and I hope that by doing this in one day, because you have cases and movements that, that happened in one state or one country, but you don't have an international day where everybody's talking about the same subject. I think that will raise that awareness. Thank you very much. Thank you.